Hey everyone, this is Brad from DevOps Journey, and today we're going to have a look at how you can install InfluxDB 2.0 from start to finish. It's going to be really easy, really convenient for you guys that are looking to get into InfluxDB, and I'm going to show you how to install it using Docker Compose. And this is my favorite way of installing applications is with Docker Compose. It makes things really convenient and it makes your servers and applications a lot more portable. So we're on Docker Hub for InfluxDB. You can pull the InfluxDB image, but I actually have a Docker file that I've created for this and it's right here in my GitHub. Check out the description below for this, and uh, I'll make sure to update these instructions with what we go over in the video. But if we have a look at the Docker Compose file, you can see that it's pretty simple here. Up at the top here, it just says the version of Docker Compose that this file is compatible with. And then uh, we have our services and just a single service under here, which is InfluxDB. So we're gonna use the InfluxDB image. We're gonna listen on port 8086. And uh, we have some storage over here and we're setting some environment variables for the InfluxDB configuration. So the next thing I'm gonna do is provision a server on the cloud here using Vulture. You can use AWS, Azure, whatever you want. Just make sure it's something you're sort of familiar with. We are going to have to open up port 8086 from the firewall so we can access this remotely. So just make sure you know how to do that with your cloud provider. And if you're using Vulture, you can just follow along because I'll show you in the tutorial. So I'm just going to add a new server, deploy a new server, click Cloud Compute. Atlanta looks good. Uh, for operating system, let's do Ubuntu. And any of these are fine. I'll just do 18.04. And then I want this one because the $2 version is IP version 6 only. I want an IPv4 address. So let's do this. So my server is provisioning now, so I will hop into an SSH session once this is up and running, and I'll show you how to install Docker Compose and then uh, run that Docker Compose file, which is going to be your InfluxDB server. Okay, so my server booted up, so let's go ahead and click on it here and just copy the IP address, and then I pull up a tab here, root at IP address, Yes, and it wants this password here. So throw that in. And we are connected. So clear the screen and let's start running the commands from uh, my GitHub repository here. So we'll do an app get update. Uh, make sure to do a sudo. And then I think if we do dash y, it's gonna automatically accept everything. And it looks good, everything's updated by default. Next thing we want to do is, uh, this is actually not pip install. It should just be apt install. So let's copy this and modify it. So I'll go sudo apt install docker.io and then uh, sudo apt install docker compose. I was thinking about Python, that's why I typed pip, but it's actually apt install. So let's do this and uh, let's add the dash y flag here and there as well. And this should just take a few minutes to install, so I'll let this run and then once we have it up and running, I'm going to pull the code and then we're going to run our docker compose commands. Like. Okay, it looks like the installation has completed. Uh, let's clear the screen and let's do uh, docker ps and you can see there's no docker containers running but it accepted the command so everything seems to be installed. Let's go ahead and pull the docker file. So I'll grab this URL and just do a git clone and put that in here and uh, let's hop in here. Take a look at the readme and it looks like it's just docker compose up so let's do that 
and I'm getting an error here and it's saying influx DB storage doesn't exist. So there's actually a problem with my Docker file. So little live troubleshooting, never hurt anyone. So let's go open this up in nano. And you can see this is the line that it doesn't like. Basically it's mapping this directory to influx DB, but there's no reference to this in the file. So that was my mistake. Uh, when I copy and pasted this from a different project, I forgot to put in the volumes. I'll make sure to fix this before I push it out to GitHub. So by the time you're watching this, this is already gonna be fixed, but I will add it here for myself. So we'll go volumes and then we'll go influx DB storage. And you can just leave everything blank here. And there we go. So let's rerun the command docker compose up. And you can see it's pulling the image. And you can see it's bringing up influx DB. This is scrolling by pretty quickly here, but it looks like it's running. I'm gonna go ahead and open up another SSH session. So we'll go SSH root at throw in the IP and then put in the password. There we go. And if we go Docker PS, you can see that influx DB is running on that port. So everything looks good. If we go curl localhost and then throw in that port you can see that it is giving us some results so that's good but now i want to access it remotely from my workstation so i'm going to go ahead and do that the first thing i want to do is make sure that this port is open so i'm going to go into vulture and then i'm going and then i'm going to go to settings and then i have firewall settings here and it doesn't have a firewall set. So let's go manage. And I'm gonna create a new firewall. And let's add a new firewall group. We'll go influx app. So obviously we need SSH open to manage it. And then we also need port 8086. So we'll just select TCP 8086. Uh, and I'm gonna say anywhere, but I recommend using my IP address and I'll make it so only you can access it and not someone else. Just keep in mind, if you're gonna to try to access it from different locations, then you will need to add multiple IP addresses in there. But since I'm just gonna destroy this lab at the end of this video anyways, I'm just gonna leave it as anywhere. And then I usually have problems with this saving unless I go add additional firewall rule, and that usually saves it for me. I think it's just sort of a weird GUI that I need to hit the plus sign twice. But the firewall is set up now. So let's go back. And I might actually need to apply it to my server. So let's go back to manage my server. And select it. And make sure it's updated. And there we go. We should be able to access it. It might take up to two minutes for the changes to take effect but let's go ahead and try it now let's just copy this put it in here and go 8086 and there we go we can see that we can get to the server so let's put in the credentials so we'll go admin and the credentials i have are actually in that docker file so let's pull them up here go to docker compose and then change me please throw that in paste it, sign in, and sure, why not save that? So this is the InfluxDB GUI. It's actually pretty nice. I think this is new to version 2.0. So let's go ahead and explore it. 
if you go underneath data, you can see that there's a couple different things here. The client libraries, this is actually really convenient. So I do a lot of Python programming. And one thing you can do is just go over to Python here and it gives you everything you need to know to set up a Python script to connect to this database. So you can see you do a pip install influxdb client, and then it gives you examples on how to initialize the client, how to write data, and yeah, it gives you three different options on how to write the data and then how to actually pull the data. So you can just copy it to your clipboard, paste it into your script, and it should be good. The next thing to do here is go to data and then go to buckets. So you can create as many buckets as you want. In the Docker file, we created a bucket by default. So you can see my bucket is there by default. And of course you have your settings, so you can delete the data older than a specific date. Uh, if we hop on over here to tokens, this is where you generate your token. Um, so just go up here, you can do read, write tokens, all access tokens. And basically this is going to be the token that you use for accessing InfluxDB with the applications that you build. If you go to Telegraph, this is where you can set up Telegraph configurations. Basically, Telegraph is used for monitoring servers. You can install a Telegraph client on a server and then have it push metrics to InfluxDB that way. If you go to Explore, this is where you can explore the data. We haven't pushed any data to this database yet, so it's not very interesting right now. But if we did push data to InfluxDB, then this is where you would see the data coming up. If you go to boards, this is where you create dashboards and then the rest is just sort of tasks, alerts and settings. So the next thing I'm going to do is push some data into InfluxDB and then we'll have a look at how it looks there. And then I'm going to show you how you can integrate another application like Grafana and have it pull data from there. Okay, so let's move ahead here and uh, let's actually go back to this data section. Let's go underneath Telegraph and let's have a look at how we can set up Telegraph on our actual server and push some data into InfluxDB. So I think we just go create configuration and you can see that there's default templates here. So you could have Telegraph monitor, Docker, Kubernetes, Nginx, Redis, or just a system. So we'll just choose system here for some basic monitoring. This is going to be all the measurements that it's taking. It's going to be taking measurements on your CPU usage, disk, memory, all that good stuff. So I'll just go create and verify and it gives us the instructions on everything we need to do. So first we install Telegraph on the system, then we configure the system with our API token. This is so our system has permissions to push to InfluxDB, and then we set up the Telegraph configuration, and basically that configuration is just telling it InfluxDB's IP address and port, which you can see matches up here. So let's go ahead and have a look at the installation instructions. And we already have Influx installed, so we want Telegraph installed. So let's select Ubuntu. And this looks pretty easy. So it's just going to pull down the package and then install it. So let's copy that and paste it in here. And now Telegraph should be installed. So let's head on back to Influx. Copy this token to the clipboard, paste that in, and then uh, let's do the copy configuration and paste it in. And now you can see that it looks like it's trying to push data. So let's go back to Influx and go listen to data. And you can see connection is found, so we look like we're all good here. Let's go ahead and hit finish. And now let's go back to our explore tab. And you can see that now there's a bunch of data in here. We have options to filter on all these different things. So if we go CPU and just click on a bunch of things, hit submit, 
you can see that there isn't a lot of data here yet since uh, it just started taking these measurements. Let's uh, go system uptime, maybe. There we go. You can see this is a measurement that we can see right away. And it basically tells you when the system first came online. So obviously, if you leave this running for a while, it's going to be collecting data and you're going to have a lot more data in your graphs on how the system is running. Uh, the next thing you could do is actually go to boards and you can create your own system dashboard. So go create dashboard, new dashboard. It looks like you can customize things here. I haven't really used this much to be honest, but let's see what it looks like. And there we go. We'll do that. And there we go. We have the first cell in our dashboard. So you can just go through and add all the metrics that matter to you. We'll go processes. Total. There we go. And what a lovely dashboard we have already. So pretty nice out of the box stuff. Usually you would have to install something like Grafana to get dashboards like this, but you can see that out of the box functionality, this is actually pretty good. So I'm actually gonna pause this video, let the server run overnight, come back and have a look at it tomorrow and see if we can have a dashboard with some useful information in it. So I'll see you guys soon. All right, so I left my server running for quite a few days here, actually, about six days. And uh, when I logged back in and went to boards, I noticed that this system dashboard got automatically created. And when you go in there, you can see that it automatically put in all the metrics that Telegraph was tracking. And now InfluxDB has automatically created a dashboard based on that. So you can see it gives you quite a bit of information about the system. We got our system uptime, the amount of CPUs, system load, total memory, memory usage, and everything like that. And yeah, this dashboard was just automatically created. Basically, all we had to do was install Telegraph on our server, as well as install InfluxDB on another server, and then you can do that monitoring. So it just goes to show you how powerful these tools can be, and they're actually quite easy to set up. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you want to learn more about InfluxDB or other DevOps tools, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.